Well, unless you've been living under a rock for the past few years, we're all very much well aware of the security exploitations that are inside Intel's CPUs, possibly dating all the way back. To some lesser extent, AMD CPUs have also been affected by this as well. What am I talking about? Meltdown, Spectre V1, Spectre V2. And who knows, we may end up finding more flaws within those CPUs in the future. Well, one of my beloved Unix operating systems that I think is one of the best for a server in OpenBSD has decided to counteract this problem and shore up the security levels of the operating system. They will by default at the kernel level disable SMT. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Bit of quick news time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a, a Thursday today, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> um, before we get into this, I want to thank Swave Pocalypse for sharing this uh, bit of news with us last night during the Backyard Tech Channel Livestream Conversations Midweek Edition. OpenBSD has decided in order to reduce the exploitation risks of Spectre, and I guess, well, Spectre V1 and 2, as well as Meltdown, they're going to disable simultaneous multi-threading. Intel's terminology, hyper-threading. Now, this is to shore up the security of the operating system. Now, OpenBSD is a secure-based or secure, security-orientated, I should say, uh, BSD Unix-like operating system. The developers have come out with basically saying that, look, it's too much of a risk. And so inside the kernel, at, at, at the kernel level, they're going to disable SMT. There are some biases out in the marketplace today, according to the developers, that you are unable to disable in the BIOS the SMT slash HT feature. They're on by default and locked. So I, the developers have come out and basically said, and I'll, I've, I've I want to read a bit from the uh, article shared by Swathe Pocalypse and also the article that I found earlier this morning. Um, SMT implementations typically share TLBs and LI caches between the threads. Now, everyone knows that. This can make cache timing attacks a lot easier, and we strongly suspect that this will make several Spectre class bugs exploitable. Again, a true comment. Especially on Intel's SMD implementations, better known as hyperthreading. We really should not run different security domains on different processes, different processor threads, I'm sorry, of the same core. Unfortunately, changing our scheduler to take this into account is far from trivial, since many modern machines no longer provide the ability to disable hyperthreading in the BIOS, provide a way to disable the use of additional processor threads in our scheduler. Basically what they're saying is you will not be able to use HT SMT through OpenBSD. They're disabling it by default. And since we suspect there are serious risks, we've disabled them by default. This can be controlled though through hardware SMT syscontrol. So basically if you install the upcoming 6.4, which is said to be disabled by default, and you need SMT, you'll have to do it through syscontrol. For now, this only works on Intel CPUs where we're running OpenBSD AMD64, so I assume it'll also run, this will affect AMD as well. We are planning to extend this feature to CPUs from other vendors and other hardware architectures, AKA RISC, and I think ARM can be in there as well. This is where the developers of OpenBSD are attempting to defend the ability to disable SMT. Note, SMT doesn't necessarily have a positive effect on performance. It highly depends on the workload at the time you're running hyperthreading. In all likelihood, it will actually slow down most workloads if your CPU has more than two cores. So, for example, a Core i3, an Intel Core 2 Duo. 
So what they're saying here is if you've got something like a quad core i5 with four or eight threads, a core i7, again, four or eight threads, or a core i9 with you know eight cores and 16 threads, SMT, HT, can actually have a detrimental effect depending on the workload at the time, whatever you're processing. Okay. Now, I'll leave a link in the description below to both the articles I found. And the other one comes from uh, Pharonix. Um, they're, they're doing it in the name of, of uh, security. Now, from the Pharonix um, article, OpenBSD could improve their kernel's scheduler to work around this, but given that it's a large feed, which I presume means they'd have to completely rewrite it, at least for now they've decided to just disable it there. Now, what does this actually mean for the daily user? Probably nothing other than improved security and reduced risk of exploitation in the timings. It's a fair comment. My Sun equipment won't run OpenBSD above 6.1. We battled to get 6.2 into the E server. It won't. The V490 will take 6.1. The three or four times I've done 6.2, it's spat the dummy. Proc 3 has panicked. Um, so, no point fighting it. Um, now, this comes out ahead of 6.4's release which should be in October this year, if the timings are right. Um, those wishing to toggle OpenBSD's SMT support can use the new hardware SMT sys control setting on the AMD-based OpenBSD, but it will be extended to cover other CPUs and architectures as well. Okay, so OpenBSD's first foray into protecting the kernel was Carl. Okay, that was the first foray into shoring up possible exploitation attacks at the kernel level affecting the CPU. This is just an extenuation of this security for OpenBSD. Do I agree with it? Something's got to be done. I mean, we all know the exploitations of Intel go, depending on what stories you read, way back to, you know, your P4s and, and Celerons. Even going far back in some news reports have said the Pentium 3s are affected by this same meltdown and spectre exploitation ability. Something's got to be done. Oracle's doing it with Solaris to shore up Solaris with 11.4. Microsoft are patching Windows as best they can. Linux are patching their various operating systems. Distros are doing their level best. I suppose if, if, if one way of shoring it up is to disable features that cannot be disabled from the BIOS regardless of whether you're running legacy or UEFI, if you can get an operating system to disable features of the proc, well, it has to happen, really, doesn't it? I'll leave a link in the description below for people to have a read of it, but look, something's got to happen. <laughs> um... It, I'm not sure, I can't, I guess OpenBSD is trying to say they want to lighten things up. I don't understand why you'd want to disable it on a risk-based system, specifically Spark or, or, or Power. Um... I, 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 I can understand their point of view. I, 
I wonder how I'm, I'm still trying to rack my brain because for virtualization ability, you need HT enabled. Now, OpenBSD is saying that depending on the workflow, it can actually be detrimental to the system on a proc running more than two cores. Dual core quad thread if you want. It, it's a good idea. It'll definitely shore up the security of the operating system. I'm just not sure whether or not it'd be detrimental at another end. Although, let's face it, these days, it's a very fine line between securing a system and the performance of the system. I guess you could say they're looking at this and saying, look, we'll forego performance for security. That's probably the best way of doing it. So, there we are. Bit of news. I'll leave a link in the, two, in the description below to the two articles. Have a read of them. Um... I think this is the way a lot of operating systems will end up going, though. Um, we know the speed wars are back on. We know the core wars are back on between AMD and Intel. Um, you know, we, we, we've gone through that before, the speed wars and the core wars. It's back again. I just don't know whether... I'm going to have to do some more research. I want to see what their plan is for risk systems specifically power and, and, and spark I'd be interested to see how they what they feel about those architectures because obviously there's arm in there as well so we'll have to see how that one goes a little bit of news for you don't forget we've got IT acquisitions video coming up for you today as well it'll be coming up later this afternoon so stick around for that and uh, tonight's live stream convos. Until then, as always, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.